Okay, so let's get started. Today I'm going to be taking a look at uh, some hair studies. Um, I've already chosen a couple, then I'm going to be, if I have some time, I'll take a look at these paintings here. Some stuff that I like, some stuff that can be changed. Um, just little suggestions here and there. But I have some announcements that are really, really important. Uh, the Portrait Studio sale is this week uh, at uh, Friday. Starting on Friday, it's just a weekend sale. It's not as big as the usual sales, but it's definitely an opportunity for those who don't own it to get a handle uh, on, on a copy, to get, a, to get their hands on a copy. Um, and the 14th is the release for the update. You guys, the new update has a posable functional hand, um, which is going to change the way I, I do things around here. Things are different now. Um, Isterac is no longer incapable of drawing hands, okay? I've, I've done a lot on my own, and I've drawn some good hands. I've had some good moments. But, but, but now is the time for me to really take this on. So I'm going to be using that a lot. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to find some opportunities to use it in classes just to show it off. Um, I actually helped sculpt it. Um, I actually sculpted a lot of it. And uh, 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 there's a going to be some updates on quality for the for the model. We're going to have some form studies in there. The lighting has changed. The UI has changed. Uh, things just keep changing a lot um, as we go, but they're good changes. They're changes that make it easier to uh, access settings per model, but also have your model uh, categories on one side instead of all a combined unit in the menu where you'd have to just keep jumping back and forth between uh, settings and model um, so that we thought that was really annoying and we're pretty sure you guys noticed it as well um, So we've changed that There's going to be better lighting controls the control for the lighting. I, I believe is a separate window and um, I haven't had much chance to use the new version all questions should be directed to our genius Abu uh, He's the one who behind this update. We masterminded all of it um, He uses it the most out of anyone so he's very very familiar with some of the bigger challenges with the UI so he's managed to iron out a lot of the little clumsy um, kind of like hiccups here and there uh, between syncing settings with the model and all of that and uh, he, he's more than aware of some of the bugs that are going on and he'll fix them and if you guys have any issues installing or getting the update uh, which should be no problem uh, please make sure you go to istabrak.com and scroll down on the store and you'll be able to find the form submission there don't message me on Facebook don't message me on Instagram because it's not that's not how you get a solution quickly if you want a solution for whatever you're experiencing with Portrait Studio or anything to do with the store uh, you email us here you give us the email explain what the issue is and someone will always get back to you if nobody gets, gets back to you maybe you've sent out too many emails in the last week and you're not considered spam I don't know how that works but we get back to everyone um, uh, so there, there, there's no reason why you would be ignored we're small enough that we can get back to everyone right now um, so the update is the 14th the sale is this weekend I'll make a video about it announcing it and this Thursday is the due date for the challenge um, the boss fight challenge uh, so let's take a look at some of the challenge submissions uh, that we're looking at here um, a lot of people get the idea just make sure it's a full environment it's not going to be any kind of character design or standing character I want to see color I want to see it pushed fully I want to see work and progress and 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 thumbnails and mood boards I want to see what's inspired you I want to see the different prototypes I want to see how many options you had to choose from um, and uh, and I really want to see that this is a full portfolio piece that someone could uh, post into their portfolio and show how they work with pre-production so that show how they work with concept art and how much they explore before each each uh, how they explore each component of the painting is pretty much what this is all about exploring each component giving each component its own time to meditate um, on on gesture on on scale on depth uh, all these units are going to be talked about this Thursday so please make sure you are you know finishing up you cannot if it's too late to start now I believe it's, you've got two days uh, and today it's too late to start now but for those who are almost done please make sure you're submitting before five o'clock it's submitted at 4 30 submitted at four do not submit it at five o'clock because I most likely will not get it I will be going through a lot of submissions and if you guys have been here if you guys were here for the last one the one with um the ancient weapon design you guys saw how many tabs I had to go through so if I go through this many tabs and I don't get to your piece and you guys cry about it 
I will I will throw such a huge fit. I will get so mad. I you guys won't even know what hit you. Cause I swear to God, if I if I if I have to see um if I if I get a complaint like, hey, you didn't look at my work and I look at the time that you submitted it and it's five oh one, I I am gonna send you poop in a bag. <laughs> I will mail it to your house. Okay? That's a threat. Just make sure you're submitting it at the right time. I don't know where I'm going to attain the poop. I think I'm going to just use OC poop because that stuff is lethal. Um, and then we're going to go into the uh, studies for today. So I invited you guys to do some studies last time. I uploaded a new category in the, into the group, and it's called studies. Uh, so I feel like we need one. I feel like some stuff's just floating somewhere uh, without any direction. Studies is also the category for any, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, request studies we do for the class. So remember, the critique hours are based off your input, 100%. I can't just sit there talking to myself the whole time. I can, but I won't. Uh, I need your art. And if you submit stuff based on all one theme, I will focus on that one theme as long as I need to, to get the point across. So this is where you guys, you know, should submit your work. If you guys make a poll at the end of every session, deciding what it is you want to talk about, this is where you submit it and this is where I'll grab it. Um, if you have a random study that has nothing to do with class studies, you can also post it here um, to be looked at as well. The more organized, the easier we'll be able to get, get through all this. Easier it will be for me to find your work. Okay, um, so I was going to look at two major components when it comes to hair. Connecting hair to the, to, the, to the scalp, which is something a lot of you have a lot of issues with. And, and then we have just the hair, the body of the hair itself. Um, by the way, for those who haven't enabled their images to be downloadable, please enable that in your Google Plus settings. It's just on your profile. You just find, you know, wherever you decide um, on your permissions and stuff. Uh, just make sure you allow people to download your images. Um, it it's, does not, it, it's very difficult for me to, to, to get a hold of your copies in their original resolution if you don't do this. Um, and then I will start now. <clears throat> Okay, so this is a good piece. A lot of you did a lot of uh, like direct photo studies, um, a little bit too close to the photo. Uh, and then I feel like you did very, very well. For those who worked off a of photo, you did very, very well. Um, but there are some things that you've missed, so I'll be taking a look at this one. <clears throat> um, so, see, this person hasn't, have they allowed me to download? Yes, they have. And then I'm just going to download their reference as well. <clears throat> okay, so let me just take a look and see if anyone's asking any questions before I start. Um, the ancient weapon design was the one we did recently. Yes, poop, poop in a bag. <laughs> I will send poop in a bag. It'll be a nice little container and you won't know what, what's in it until you open it. It'll be a little gift card from OC. Okay, um, so I'm going to start off with the scalp, how hair connects to a scalp. Okay, so one of the most important things that you need to think about is that you cannot start painting hair without a decent brush. If you're not using a brush that is shaped and angled so that it'll, it'll create, recreate the way hair piles up, the way hair bunches up, the way hair grows together the way hair looks from a distance you won't be able to pull any of that off it's like using the thinnest little paintbrush you have to pull off an entire almost third of a painting it's not going to work like that so the, the, the theory is that you should be doing the opposite so hair grows piece by piece paint it clump by clump chunk by chunk and the, the rule is the rule that i always teach and the way i do it is you get only so many brush strokes in the small size. So this is the largest size we'll use compared to the head of the painting. So I don't need any size bigger than this. Um, I can deal with all the major changes in the values with this brush stroke. The smallest size I'll ever use. So this would be somewhere here and then maybe somewhere here. The smallest size I would ever use is this, and I would probably per half of the face, so we would cut the face off like that and like that, per half I would probably give, or per section of equal size, I would probably give three of each. Maybe that's a little bit too much, so three max, and that might be enough. 
So you get only three of these. Now, a lot of you are asking me, Isarak, you are a hypocrite, because in your gallery, we can see that you used not, not three, but a hundred of the thin ones. Now, I ask you, if we were to analyze this painting, or even, oh God, uh, or even this painting here, the thinner pieces that I use are close to the eyes. The most cluster of detail we have, along with the lashes and the uh, the glare of the light on the the, 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 the eyeball, are all so sharp that, that this amount of detail cluster doesn't come doesn't compare or come close to the amount of detail cluster here, which is what we do for a focal point. So now that I showed you that, we look over here. Though I have many small brush strokes, they do not compare in sharpness. So that's the key here. They may compare in size, but they do not compare in sharpness. So the details on the eyebrows, the details on the lights, the contrast, all of those things combined together. Uh, maximize the detail focus here so that the audience is always looking here. And then we give them something else to look at over here. So this was me pushing my realism. This was me testing my realism. This was me trying to create that wet hair, like for 50% wet, um, that, that, that hair feeling caught in the wind. I also had to have the hair active, so the hair was moving. And so I applied more detail there instead of hair that was um, static or hair that was not part or directly in front of the face. And that's my final fact. Uh, the hair was in front of the face, meaning that it inherited some of the face's focal importance. Um, so what were the three uh, conditions right now that I applied um, to this? Uh, not three, I think it was two. The fact that the hair was active, um, the fact that the hair was in front of the face, and of course, yes, the fact that the hair did not have, in fact, the, the, the same amount of detail cluster in focus and sharpness compare, or, or contrast compared to the face. So the face has pure white sometimes at points, especially around the eyes, and compared to the hair, um, it's much brighter and the hair has zero whites on it, zero whites anywhere. It does have shine, it does have the belt, the C shape of, of highlight that I talked to you guys about, but it does not have um, a, some sort of competing contrast level at all. So make sure you write those down. Uh, you know, the conditions you need. Inherited. <laughs> Good catch. I didn't even, I didn't even catch that. Um, okay. So another piece that I did here that has um, very, very minimal hair to it, or I'm not sure if I uploaded it. I think it's on my Instagram. Um, I got the point across, I hope. But the other one was very, very basic, very wispy, waspy, uh, flab hair. It was just like melting. It made nothing. Um, but it, it also felt like a big clump of hair. And that's because you are thinking about line efficiency and brush efficiency. How much hair can I show with just two brush strokes? And I'll show you how. So we'll start there. We'll start with the most minimal. And we'll go on from that. Um, so I'm using my, so imagine this is just a piece of, you know, just a piece, single, singular piece of hair. I'm using my brush stroke here. Oopsie, it didn't change the color. All right, so I've darkened the hair toward the bottom, lightened it towards the top. That's brush number one, and then brush number two. I'm showing off the belt of highlight that travels along the curve of the hair. And remember that hair isn't just one flat paper on top of another flat paper, and then we just keep shrinking the paper as we go. The hair moves in like a almost like a cup-like, eggshell kind of like shape where it's hollow on the inside and moves outward. Um, so it kind of makes these very, very large uh, cone-like shapes or bowl-like shapes. It's very hollowed on the inside, which means that its contours are convex. They move outward. So when a highlight travels on top of a sphere, the highlight takes the shape of a sphere. Um, and if it's purely metallic, the pictures that this reflective mirror um, reflects or has in it are, are all distorted and circular. Remember those, uh, you know, in, in the theme parks where you have those mirrors that have different uh, shapes to them and you stand in front of them and you look so funny. 
Um, so this is the exact same principle. Light changes along the surface it's on. So that's why we have a belt of light. And we have to make sure that we can pull off the bed with as little brushes as possible. So this and this are your two main concerns. The singular brush, large brush used to represent the most, so large brush used to represent the most volume, and then the belt of highlight. Okay? Um, and that's it. That's really all it is. Of course, we have to shrink our brush gradually from large to small. Um, so we're going to be dealing with that in a second. So that's technique. How about anatomy? Um, you have to remember that hair, your brush strokes follow the direction of the hair growth. If hair grows this way, trust me, when you make your brush travel this way, you are doing yourself a big no. What happens is when you are using the brush, you are leaving behind a grain. So this is brush number one. And they blended very well, but if you, you know, analyze it closely enough, zoom in closely enough, you can find the trail of a lot of the later brushes that you did. And this is all a, a grain. A lot of these grains are left behind, like the grains of a tree or a bark. Um, you can see that this is how they're growing. And when hair growth is determined with arrows, this arrow reveals to you the direction, the singular direction your brush can move in, so that you're leaving behind a grain that follows the contour. So contour, brush size, anatomy, and the grain of the hair and direction of the hair growth, the belt of highlight that is on the, 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 the cone-like, um, cylindrical-like, bowl-like shape of each chunk of hair. So there's hair chunks that fall down on their own, and there's hair chunks that glow, grow along a dense spherical dome of the cranium of the head. And then finally, uh, hair is act a lot like fabric, so hair equals fabric. Um, and fabric, when you run, follows you around. It does not; it's not dense enough to keep its position while you're running. So if it was a block, <laughs> like if you were wearing bricks, it would not follow you around. Uh, maybe they clunk each to each other. I don't know if that even makes any sense. But if it's heavier than you. It does not follow you around, you follow it around. So what's the heavier object? Obviously you, and the lighter object is the, the object that follows you around when you move. So hair follows the, hair is of low density following the object of high density. Um, so it takes the shape of objects it falls on. So let's say there's a shoulder. Hair takes the shape of the shoulder, falls and drapes along it. And the key word here is drape. Hair drapes just like fabric does and then um, it follows the direction. So if hair is, so the person's traveling this way, hair trails around like a tail, just like fabric would. Hair doesn't really fold the way um, fabric does. I mean, if every single individual hair grew together like the fibers on top of a piece of fabric, then they would. But no, hairs grow on top of each other. They grow along different lines on the contour. So hair would never make folds like this. But hair does curl. Uh, different clumps of hair grow similar to each other. And finally, um, I've said finally like seven times, um, each like let's say square inch, like five square inches, that soon makes sense, um, grows differently than the next. So the hair here grows up and then down. Hair here grows on a slant. Hair here grows on a straight movement down. Have you ever tried folding this hair upward if you have long hair? It just looks hilarious. Uh, it just kind of does that. Have you guys ever done that? My hair does that. Because uh, I've always had the same part. Ever since I was a kid, I've never really changed my parting. So my hair has always grown in one direction. Um, then we have, again, same thing. Leading into this piece here. Going down. Then hair on the bottom goes this way. Same with eyebrows. Eyebrows are the same thing. Hair at the start of the eyebrow grows upward, and just like a fishbone, um, hair from the top grows down, hair from the bottom goes up, and they all meet together at the end right around here. And these little hairs grow up directly. So hair growth pattern is the direction your brush moves in. It is the only direction your brush moves in. If you're doing hair for the eyebrow, in this direction, you're 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 doing you're going against anatomy completely. 
there is a certain set of rules that makes us all human. And these are the rules that we memorize as artists. The rules that don't make us similar, for instance, not everyone has brown eyes, so that's why you should memorize or try to study more than one kind of eye color, but everyone has a spherical eye. Everyone has a generally spherical eye. So that's the universal anatomy. Then there's the particular less universal anatomy. Um, so that's what I'm saying here, that there is a universal way hair grows. If it's growing like up, like that one guy from Gladiator, um, you know, with his hair like all the way up like that. And of course you have to adjust, but this is not human anatomy. Um, this is not universal human anatomy. So all that said, I'm going to count my brushes. So over here, remember I drew those things for you guys. So this brush set, you get like as many as you want. This brush size, sorry. You get as many as you want. And for the smallest one, you get three per piece. I'm, I mean three brush strokes. I mean you have to strategically plan where you're going to put them and that's, that's where they're going to be. <clears throat> okay, so just like um, what I did here, there was a number of them that I couldn't uh, overdo. Um, I don't know why it's not working. Okay, so there was uh, one. I'm counting this one as one, two, three. This is a negative space, so this doesn't count. So one, two, three major ones. And then I have this one as four, but it's kind of blended out, so it doesn't really count. This one has the most contrast. It's white against black. This is gray against gray. And then I have one. Uh, the ones on the outside, I don't like counting because those are flyaways. Those are the hairs on the outside. I don't really count those. They're part of the silhouette. You can have a million of them in there. Um, in, in a single photo and it will be hard to choose which one is the focal point. They're just always going to be there. So for the sake of the technique and because I don't want to get confused in the middle of a painting, I, I just don't count these guys here. So one, two, three. Um, and this one kind of extends a little bit. So four. And then I think those are the only places where I really have thin brush strokes. But you can see here this large brush stroke. So that's one, two, three. Um, and then I've got a couple more large brush strokes. This is one large one. This is one large one. This is much thinner than this section where it travels this wide. This where it travels very, very thin. All of these are very, very thin brush strokes. Um, and that's pretty much all I do for, for the one over here. Uh, my latest one or even my latest, latest one, which is, let me find it for you guys. I could just find the Patreon folder, that's where it's going to be. <clears throat> okay, so for this one, I really, really followed that technique. I really stayed very, very large brush strokes. I didn't really do anything else to it. Ugh, oh, stupid windows. And um, I, I kept them very large. And you see how the, the, really the major read behind the hair and the volume behind it, everyone's commenting on the volume, is, is because I managed to get the spherical, convex shape of the hair chunk and the belt of light that is in a C shape following the spherical contour line. And I just keep repeating that pattern. I have more brush strokes that are large compared to small ones and the thinnest brush strokes for the hair, and I don't even have flyaways, are the ones closest to the eye because they inherit, inherit the focal point. Okay? Um, so this one here has a little bit of detail, just a tiny bit, not, not, not any more than anything outside here. And that's just because I wanted this gesture to kind of snake into the eyes. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so it, it does not, it's not required of you to detail hair the way you saw before. Um, for this one, it was more of a hair study, to be honest. Um, it wasn't so much, uh, uh, you know, only about the face or detailing the eyes as far as possible. I have so much less detail in the lashes here than I do here. Uh, the eyebrows have less detail on them than I do here. So the, the, the nose has more sharpness here than here. The lips have more detail here than here, even though lips generally have less. Um, so this is more of like a combined hair and eyes study, where this one was just a face study with, with hair just there to, as, as a placeholder to fill that space up and make it familiar. So I won't focus on any issues in the face, but I will say your light environment is completely off. Um, so let's get started. So the brush, the brush stroke that I'm using is a large brush stroke relative to each area. It's, there's no one singular brush stroke I can give you that you can use safely in forever. It's just, it's relative to the, the state that the size and scale of the face compared to your canvas size, 
which changes how your brush size works. But for my number two brush, um, I, I, I'm using a 35 size, which is pretty good. It's pretty small. I'm not sure what the size is, it size is for this uh, thingy image size. Um, and pixels, uh, so 700. Um, I I usually use like a, like let's say it's 1500. I usually use a size. Let me see what's comfortable. This is usually the size of the head. I usually use a size of 100, on average, just to deal with the with the hair and everything. All right. So what am I doing? I am using the color of the skin and climbing upward along and only along the hair growth pattern. I am not worrying about bald spots. I am not worried about anything because there is one mission I'm on right now, which is making it feel like the hair is actually growing out of the skin. So hair doesn't have like a military formation around the hair. If you're looking at hair plugs and people who have like had had hair surgery or hair implant surgery, um, you'll see that they do have a very fake looking, uh, doctors are not artists sometimes, um, so they will just kind of like align it along one side very, very specifically. They won't actually try to create like a zigzag effect or like a randomization so the hairline feels a little more natural. Um, but what I'm doing right, right now is doing that exactly. So when hair grows naturally, you can see a little bit of scalp. So I'm just choosing that color right now. Then I, what I do is I do the opposite. I, I travel in the opposite direction. So the brush grain that I leave behind the taper, tapers inward towards the skin. So I lose a little bit of that uh, excessive brightness in between the hair. Okay. And then I shrink my brush. And you shrink your brush in stages. You never go back up unless you really have to. You shouldn't have to if you're doing it right. And what I do is I break up each clump again one more time and I'm going to keep dividing each clump that I create every single time. I can't go any further here because now I have to address the outsides. All right. So for the other pieces I'm going to be talking about color for the hair so don't worry if I don't get to your studies. Remember, you guys don't do studies to get looked at and be famous for two seconds on a, on a really small channel's video. Um, you guys do studies so you can improve from them. So if I don't get to your studies, please remember, it's going to be okay. You see how my brush never travels outside of the brush grain. I don't, I don't go back and forth painting hair like this. This is, this is the, the way an idiot paints hair. Okay, you paint the hair in one beautiful, fast brush stroke in the direction that the hair grows in. This is all connected, this is wrong. The belt is too straight, the belt should be more like that. So I'm just going to, the belt of highlight, I mean, I call it a belt. Don't know why. And now I'm just doing some highlights. So there are color highlights and then there's highlight highlights. Every single hair is so smooth, is so shiny, so full of oil that it can act like a mirror and hair itself changes color along your head. It doesn't just have one color all around, unless you have like really, really dark hair, but I have lots of highlights in my hair. At some points my hair is ashy, some points my hair is very red. Um, so you might want to consider having a little bit um, of a value change to anticipate, anticipate the color change that will come later. Okay, I'm just cleaning up your light environment. Way, way too dirty. Okay, so I'm just continuing that now, just like that. And then I'm going to think about the fact, remember the cone, the cylinder? Well, that's a three-dimensional object in space. That means it has a core shadow and a highlight to it. And that's kind of how I start, see that, how it grew, how it became volumed and voluminous? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Jesus. All right. So normal. Now I'm just going to throw a very, very quick little brush stroke to decide where that belt is going to be and if it really does match and that's going to be there as well. And then now I go back and start detailing a little bit more. Remember that some hair pieces are in front of other pieces and that means the belt doesn't get to continue all the way around. Sometimes it overlaps. 
Okay, and that's when I start just detailing a little bit, breaking up pieces that are already in there into even smaller pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna enlarge my brush again. This area is underdeveloped. So it looks a little bit clunky, but we still have our beautiful smudge tool to use later. And that will help kind of help us figure out a lot of the, 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 the grain and how it doesn't feel married into the, uh, the painting. So we're gonna be tapering a lot of these uh, brush ends back into the skin and uh, back into the hair. Okay, so I'm shrinking and sometimes I'll use a light brush that's small. Sometimes I'll use a dark brush that's small right in the middle Sometimes these, these create like kind of, they grow in, in, a, in a cross direction because these are the loose hairs that sit on top. They don't really have a growth pattern. They're kind of the ones that always catch the static. And that's when I start smudging. So I'll smudge this grain away. And a lot of the time I will smudge, 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 paint, paint, smudge, smudge. I'll smudge less every, at every junction, but I do smudge quite a lot. And that's really the only way you can build up detail without having it affect or challenge the detail in the face. Remember, this is just hair. This isn't the focal point. So it shouldn't be needing this much work or meditation. It shouldn't need this much uh, thinking be because it's not anatomy. It's not function. It's not uh, character. It's not expression. It's not the main driving force behind the character unless they have like an outrageous um, identifiable hairstyle that really defines the character. But at, at that point, you, you still can't excuse the focal point um, from, the, from the face and just apply it to the hair. It doesn't make sense. Next up is the change of value. So we're going back into, I'm actually just gonna use multiply. And I'm going to darken the hair the closer and further it gets, the closer it gets to the scalp and the further it gets from the light source. So multiply doesn't really layer very well. And this is just bringing in contrast. Very, very simple. It's not a trick or anything. It's just uh, bringing in some contrast. And then I'll, after that, I'll just follow up with some really, really loose flyaway hairs. And I'll shrink my brush every time. So I finished with the larger size and now I'm gonna apply the smaller size. Sometimes if you overdo this, it will look gross, it will look messy. The smaller ones are really, really close to the scalp. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more. I'm just gonna overlap the part of the hair that kind of, the bangs that kind of come in front and those kind of cast a little cast shadow. And uh, I'm going to bring the smudge tool and smudge along. So all my brushes that I did here earlier, all the brush strokes that started this off are now gone. But that's okay because, again, it's a recursive process. We can go back if we need to. If we had a major change, if there was a core shadow missing, typically you should try mapping out with a sketching brush before you start where you're going to have this, what style you're going to have. What, what, there's a lot of fashion involved and a lot of character design and research involved in choosing the right hairstyle for your character. I know that always slows me down. I'm not really an expert at it. Then I get um, the highlighter brush, the, the, the dodge tool, and I kind of exaggerate that little. I, I, first of all, I put it on mid-tones. Highlight um, is way, way too invasive. It's way too mean. Um, mid-tones is wonderful for hair. Um, so I'm just gonna, is that the right brush? Yeah. And I'm just gonna keep going with that. See that? Suddenly the hair became hair. It's all to do with this little, this little belt. And making sure you have the right shape. If you don't have a good shape, you're not really gonna get what you need out of it. So I'm just gonna smudge away any roots of these brushes. Her hairstyle's trying to look a little bit weird, but for the sake of the demonstration, just ignore that. It's a little chopped up, but this is without reference. So this is how hair will typically look if you don't plan it that effectively. And then what I'll do is basing it off the focal point here. Sometimes, and this is all to do with you and what you feel like doing, but it can get a bit tricky knowing which hair 
which of those three you put. So we're gonna create a little tally and I'm gonna choose where I'm gonna put these guys. I'm actually gonna use my sketching brush. It's a little bit more safe that way. It's pretty small, so 15. One. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in a new layer just to show you how important these guys are. See how much I slowed down deciding where these go? Everything was so quick, so smooth early on, but now everything's slowed down because these make all the difference. Okay, so that's fine. I'm going to put another one over there. Nope, that's horrible. May just need the two here. And then I'm going to put one there. And I think that's it. Put another guy there. Yep, see that? So one, two for this side, and the other side I used only one, two. I didn't even need the third one, so I ended up having one, two, three, four out of the six that I was planning on having as my max. And then because this is all in a new layer, I get my eraser brush. Please focus on class. Guys, and um, I erase away at the start and the end of every single one of these brush strokes I added. And remember, if they are a highlight, if they were the colored ones, the ones that were brighter, they also get the, the they inherit some of that value. Okay, so just like that, and a little bit there, a little bit there. No, that was horrible. Okay, and uh, just like but the painting you saw earlier, sometimes I uh, smudge that, uh, not smudge it, blur it. So I use the blur tool uh, just to show that, you know, one more time, making sure that it's not in the way of anything, it's not in the way of any painting, uh, I mean, any detail in the painting. Okay, so I'm just following up now with casting some shadows. So some hair pieces do cast shadows on others. And I just keep going till I like it, till I like what I'm seeing. And, and um, I'm like I'm satisfied with, with the outcome. For curls, you don't really try curls unless you have a reference. Because curls are, there's just so many kinds. They're, they're very thick. They can get a little bit confusing because hair is very reflective and metallic at some points. And other points, it's very matte and easy to render. Um, so you need to remember that a, a reference will empower um, uh, your, your it'll, it'll empower your brush and have you do less guesswork. Guesswork is obvious. Guesswork is easy to spot. Write that back to me. It looks messy. It looks clunky. It looks gross. Um, it looks a little bit uh, uh, messy as well because it it, it has that I, I, uh, that that floating hover brush stroke that, that the one too many brush strokes in that area shows the artist didn't know what to do next. They just kept you know standing on their on the on, on the spot. So I go back and smudge if I if I like what I see. If I don't like it, um, I'll erase it and try again. I'm just tapering. And then every single one of these little brush strokes is hair in front of other hair. So you can't just let the, the hi highlighter just sweep over everything. You're going to have to show off the cast shadows because hair casts shadows as well. It grows in front of each other and hair doesn't grow, doesn't sit hair by hair. It, it um, clumps up and acts as one unit. Like every 3,000 hairs clump up and act as one unit. Uh, and those are all like like little tiny um, brush strokes. Okay, and so I'm gonna try to figure out the parting. So usually I just throw a big parting and um, then I start painting on top of it. The further I get from, see that how it looks like a real parting? Because I, I layered it on top as the hairs grew. So the closer I got, the more layers, and then I just blend away. And that's how you get a real parting. Smudging sometimes can throw in little pixels that are full of color, like noise. Uh, so you might want to fix that. And then we have baby hair. The evil 
plague of the world. Um, and I just kind of throw in the little brush strokes. Don't worry if you're losing count. This is not where we count this. We blend all of these away. And baby hairs are really important for combining the hair proper to, this, to the forehead. Don't worry, all of this gets blended away. Okay. And I'm just making sure I'm using as much as I need. And then we blend. <clears throat> when you work light to dark. Um, in pencil, you don't really work, you're not restricted to light to dark. You can have a kneading eraser that will take away a lot of your color as well as you shouldn't be blending with your finger because your finger is full of oils and your oils will solidify the lead and not allow it to be blendable later on once that oil dries up. Um, also, it, well, I don't think it even dries up. It just stays there and becomes smudgy and tears the paper. So you can use a kneading eraser. You can erase in, in, in little um, stipples and, and dab a little bit and, and you wouldn't have to worry about... Um, uh, you know, ha having more value there than you need to. Okay, so this is a very, very general tutorial. I'll talk about the photo reference in a sec. But I just kind of smudge away at the outside. Sometimes we're creating the illusion of the texture, so having a bit of smudge on the outside acts like a bunch of hairs, a bunch of flyaway hairs. I'm going to try uh, Dodge Tool on Highlights only because I'm so advanced into the completion. Um, uh, you can do this as well once you know your, your set and you know that this is what you're going to stick with. I don't recommend bringing in contrast unless you know you're done. I feel like there should be like a second chunk over here and here. And I'm just going to give that its values. I'm going to taper that, give that some detail, and then uh, just throw the highlighter there. My brush is always following the grain. <clears throat> Oh yeah, a brush for blending works wonderful. Uh, for pencils, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and you don't have to do this clean method. You can be a little bit more messy, but as long as these principles are intact, I think your hair will look wonderful. Um, it'll definitely take a step forward if you just at least, at least started organizing your brush strokes. And remember, when you're coloring, you bring this color on top of the scalp. That's the color you use. Some hair on the temples grows directly down. I'm leaving some of these areas unblended so you can see how they work in. But typically, I'd blend a lot of this away. The hair would be much darker. Um, for white hair, for hair that is really, really pale, you just pre-prepare like your... your um, your, your values that you're going to use that day and you make sure that you can uh, you're not going to get any darker and that the contrast any contrast you bring will be because of edge work and sharpness and not because of black against white you can bring all the white you want okay so I'm just um following some of these. And then for darker hair, what I do, if, if I feel like I work too light, and I suggest this as well, though it might be digitally dependent, but it's your choice, I, I darken afterward. And the hair just looks so alive, so beautiful. And it works as a nice introdu introducer for some contrast and framing for the face. And this all here, I'm leaving it behind to copy and, and move in the direction of a highlight, the belt that I talk about, and then darkening the start, and of course, smudge, smudge, smudge. If you don't smudge while you paint, you're, you're, you're not, you're, you're missing half the techniques. Half the volume is not there for your work. Um, 
The style itself is very boring. Uh, I try something else. Um, sometimes we have bounce light that kind of hovers like an ambient light. It kind of sits just like that. Do you guys see that? Uh, you still have to make sure it follows the hair texture. Sometimes it does that as well. Um, this is all that bounce light from the room. Hair can do this. Um, but you have to make sure that it actually follows the, uh, the, the, the texture of the hair. So you have to go back and kind of just make sure it matches everything else. And then you'll get that ambient light that brings the hair back to life. But just on the basic principles of this, it doesn't always end up happening. It's not always there. Um, it, it, it's just sometimes if, if it's a bright enough room or if something nearby is, or if they're wearing a white shawl and some hair is showing through, that might happen. Always smudge for everything, Angelina. Everything should always be smudged. You don't just bring the paint in and hope it sits there the way it's supposed to. Everything should be smudged. Everything should have been like, intimately explored by you. I'm sorry, mods. Okay, so some of these are looking too similar. Remember, randomize. Remember, be random. Hair texture is a dance of your hand. Um, it, it's 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 that's how you remember what a texture is. So if 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 you have enough in your visual library for your hand that to dance in for it, it makes no sense when I describe it. Jeez, but every every texture is is a dance. So when I'm I'm gonna close my eyes and sketch. Um, this is the, the sketch kind of dance that I do for fur, so I, I do a little something like that. I, I think I'm painting on top of the, I'm just going to move down a little. So this is what I do for fur when I'm designing some fur, actually it's not bad. Okay, so when I'm designing some fur. When I'm designing a plant, so let's say I'm drawing a tree. My eyes are closed, Abu can be here to, to watch me. I'm just going to look at where I'm going to start, now I'm closing my eyes. So this would be a tree. I'm, I'm not sure I'm doing this right. This would be kind of like what the tree is doing. Okay, so these are the branches. And then when I'm done, all I would really have to do is just make sure that they're aligning together. And this is kind of what, what a branch does because it's a dance that your hand remembers. Um, what's another texture that, of oh, hair, so I'm going to draw some hair. So this is how I draw hair. So this is, looks a little bit like fur, I've talked about them being similar to each other. Um, I'm going to draw a little bit more of a flowy style. Okay, so that looks a little bit more like the hair I sketch. Um, it should be something you can do with your eyes closed because it's something your hand remembers that it's doing. I'm going to draw like a, okay, I'm, draw, I'm looking, I'm going to draw like a head and I'm going to draw some more hair here on either side. My eyes are closed. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to forget this. My eyes are still closed. Okay, so this is all the root of the hair. This is just what I want hair to follow. This is how I feel like hair is, you know, this is how I feel like hair behaves. And this is how you create that familiarity. So my eyes are not closed anymore, now I'm just sketching the way I do for, for a piece of hair, just like that. So this is something that I would take into the final draft. And then for the fur, my eyes are now open. Actually, I drew better with my eyes closed. And then for the branches, see how I let my hand decide, because my hand and my brain know how to randomize. So it's not something my... I actively do. It's something that I, I, a dance in your hand that allows you to memorize a texture because you, you remember it being sporadic, remember it being flowy, or remember it being um, small little explosions, and you know, you know that the hair has a starting crest and then it kind of just connects again into the next piece. Okay? Um, and then for the bark, what I usually do is start off with a spiral and then just see what I need to do in order to keep spiraling that around. And my hand dance is doing everything. So the texture is in your hands. It's a dance. It's something that you are familiar with. Um, it's, it's, that, that's what you need to remember to do when you're randomizing. Nature is random, and so when it comes to textures like fur or hair or bark or flowers or grass, um, that's the nature's random way of doing something. 
And you'll notice you repeat a lot. So hair can look like fur, fur can look like um, leaves, and lightning can look like bark. Um, and that's really, that's all, nature is pretty universal. It doesn't have many weird ones. Uh, rocks are very, very fun. Rocks are the most difficult for some people. Um, so I'm not gonna close my eyes, but uh, rocks kind of just, I kind of just let my hand do these um, jagged moves and then my pen pressure disappeared. I kind of let my hand do these jagged moves and then try to make sense of the form study after. So I would do something like that give the top of the rock something and then just do something else, do something else, tiny little juts of the rock. Sometimes we have the straight edge, sometimes we have the part that corroded off and we've got the tops of the rocks. So this is like all to do with nature being random is what I'm trying to explain to you guys here. And then we just connect the rest. Yes, this should draw trees more often. <laughs> a lot of people say my trees are freaky. <laughs> I like I like uh, fall time trees. I used to do a lot of uh, plein air sketching. Um, I actually plan on doing this this year on my kayak. <clears throat> so um, yeah, be random. Remember to be random, and uh, that's all that that really counts here. It's it's that you you measure you your, your the rules control how, whether or not you're using the right brush size, and then. Everything else is just your hand dancing its way into the texture. Color. Um, this is too textured. We need to smudge. So now it's pretty much like lesson is over. I'm just going to be critiquing. I'm smudging away any of the areas that don't really touch any light. Because where there is no light, there really is no detail. And I'm leaving the sharpest points only where there is a highlight. <clears throat> I'm also going to do one more really, really big... Uh, suggestion for you guys which is desaturate desaturate where hair is reflective because that hair is so reflective and shiny it's reflecting the real nature of the light source which is its color so I'm gonna get dodge tool on midtones and I'm gonna bring in a bit more of a stronger crest here And I'm going to desaturate the middle. Oh, that's too much. Okay, we're desaturating wherever the hair is, um, sh reflecting the light back. And then I'm going to get the light source's exact color. What is the color of the light source? This off-white. And I'm going to throw that right on top. That's how you make hair look shiny. That's how you make anything look shiny. You bring the actual color in. And this is already desaturated because it's off-white. It's a bit, it doesn't have any color to it. Where you bring saturation back is you turn your sponge tool back on saturation and you saturate on the outside. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit so you can see. But you saturate on the outside of that highlight belt. And if you don't believe me, let's take a look. Okay. Let's just take a look here. So pale, purple, purple. This is almost like grayscale, but see that big belt of purple here? And here, let's look here. Pale, pale, orange, saturation, squint your eyes. Orange, orange, orange. This one is really obvious, pale, orange, orange, pale, and just on the outside is orange. See that? The real color of her hair is out here. These are the shadows because it's a three-dimensional object looking away from the light, and this off-white, almost pale color is the color of the light source. Look at how it's almost the exact same color on her cheek. Come on, Google. Pale, and look at that big just bunch of saturation right there okay okay even blonde hair see how blonde hair doesn't really get black on the on the lighter parts but it does get a bit dark wherever there's a cavity or a hole but see pale and then we've got that golden yellow pale golden yellow and you can just do this everywhere I don't make this shit up 
So hair that's really shiny, it's easy to tell where all this is happening. Hair that is not so shiny, it's, it gets to be a little bit more frizzy and loses its vibrance. So not shiny hair kind of loses its vibrance, okay? Um, so this is an exaggeration, but you saw in a second ago how, how shiny and how clumpy all that hair was. So there's this one um, artist, god damn it, I forgot him. He's like Norman Rockwell, but he does pinups, pinup painting. Um, I, th I think it's, I think it's him. I'm sorry if it yields some bad results. I hope it doesn't but I'm looking for a very specific one. And this one, I stared at it for the longest time. I, I cropped, obviously I, I cropped the cringy pit bits out and I just stared at how he did the hair. There is almost like no detail, but it just speaks, for lack of a better term, volume. Don't these girls have better things, things to do than just sit there trying to get a husband? Anyway, see that? This one really, really, really is so pretty way he does the hair. Oh yeah, Jill, Jill Elvgren. I'm not even saying that right. See that? Just one tiny little thing, pale, orange, and then just a bunch of smudging. And it just, it's, it's my favorite part of the whole painting. It's my favorite part. Everything else is so basic. Everything else, I know, I know that seems off, but I really judge an artist by their ability to do paint, speed paint. And it looks like they speed paint a lot of these. So the reason why this hair is such a good example or pinups are such a good example for how to minimally do hair is because they had to do them a lot. They had to do a lot of these pinups monthly per calendar. And they had to work with the styles of the 50s and the 60s. And those styles were really, really rigid and full of curls and easy to, kind of difficult for an artist to pull off because they can't just throw a bunch of texture in and hope it reads. They have really defined belts of light they have to follow. Um, yeah, Jill Elfgren. Uh, Elf, Elfgren. El Eldren. I don't know. Um, okay, so a lot of this has to do with being as minimal as possible. And it's all about the, the, the detail, relief, detail, relief. Okay. So because I smudged away a lot of this, I'm just going to go back with my brush and just uh, kind of just show off where these pieces stop. What's casting shadows on other stuff? Just like that. So I'm just using my number four brush from my, uh, this is the blocking brush. I don't call it a blocking set. I'm so sorry if I've confused you guys. This is the dry oil brush. It behaves, I, I, I designed it so that it behaves like a, a dr an oil brush that has been filled or oil a brush that has been filled with oil paint that is not really been saturated with water it behaves very very dry which is wonderful for blocking it's just to apply the paint and then you bring in the water later to blend too much water makes it a little bit too blendable that's why I call it a dry oil brush though I think uh, Bob Ross would uh, argue with me about that he likes to lay down a massive base of blendable white um, really, really wet base, which kind of just add, takes away some of the texture. Who am I to argue with, with Bob Ross? <laughs> okay, so I'm just casting some shadows over here. Wherever there's a big clump, cast a shadow. And if you don't know how to cast shadows, to be honest with you, you need to stay away from hair studies. The hair studies are hard. Hair is hard to just draw, and hair is hard to draw gracefully. Write that back to me. Um, so you, you really need to know what you're doing with your forms. If you don't know what a core shadow is, stop, drop, and roll, <laughs> and then do some form studies. Okay. Um, I think this hair here is just too orange. Hair, this looks like a wig. Hair is very desaturated. Just remember that. Um, and blonde is very bright. And the only saturation we really get is, um, it also gets to be a little bit more gray. Uh, the only saturation we really get is on those little belts where I showed you the gold was. Um, so we get uh, this color brush, and then we choose that, saturate it towards the golds, and just um, apply a little bit there and there. And then that highlighter uh, color, oopsie, just on a separate layer, I would kind of just like grow that. 
You also don't have like a core a core light for the whole head, so the whole light should be travel the whole head should be traveling from light to dark, um, just like that. Okay, uh, so I hope that was helpful for you. Um, just remember that uh, you are allowed to use black to frame on air. Hair can be thick enough that it actually is a fabric that creates dark pockets between the face and the hair. You can have a black transition value. Um, hair doesn't really get this red unless you've dyed it. It doesn't really do this. <clears throat> um, let me see what I can do. Uh, so mid-tones. Not sure why that's not working. I might reselect, deselect. I don't know what's happening. Why is it? Oh, god damn it! I want a separate layer. Okay, my bad. All right. So, just creating that little belt of light, throwing it on over here higher over here because it's higher along just like that and then what we do is we desaturate along the center of every one of these to leave it saturated is to make it super cheesy and then we're going to get the exact color of the light source so I know a lot goes into it but if you guys just focus on your studies and, and uh, just get the bad ones out of the way I love that saying. I don't know who made it. I don't know who wrote it initially, but uh, get the bad shit out of the way. Get it out of the way. Um, just, you know, let, let yourself suck. And when once you're done with that, once you're done sucking, then you'll be able to see that, you know, hey, I, I don't only have suck now. I've managed to figure out my way through uh, saturation and or... or I managed to figure out my way through a grayscale head. I can render it very well. I apply color. Oh my god, it turned into a mud pile. It's okay. Let me get the sucky colored ones out of the way. And then you just keep going from there and you realize that you can do more with less. And once you get to that epiphany, hey, I can do more with less, that's when your paintings will really, really look amazing. Everywhere you'll start to realize you can do more with less. Efficiency is evolution. Okay, so I'm just smudging the hair, imagining this as being part of a head one day. And if it's not, if it's not part of a head one day, that's fine. Um, you can detail as much as you want. If it's going to be just someone turning around or you can't even see their face or if it's a bit of a, you know, hair showing through a hood or something like that, um, then you can kind of go around there. I feel like these studies are a little bit too detailed. I feel like you should start over. Um, you should use stuff that is a little bit more in, in progression. You did well for this type of hair, definitely, but this type of hair can get very shiny very fast. Um, so it, it has every single little hair here has its own little belt. Every single little chunk has its own you kind of just have to find them and then smudge away at them. There's always a point where the hair started to look at the light and sometimes this happens. Don't forget about this, the glare back, the glow backward towards the light. Wherever hair is shiniest, it glows back out towards the light. Okay. Uh, for you, I recommend you start grayscaling, perfect your, uh, you know, your instinct for smudging, figure out what you want to do. I wanted to look at a lot of these, but they seem so outside of what we were going to look at today. Um, but I, I feel like I, ha I have to give an honorable mention for this. I really love what you were doing here. Um, I feel like you should extend the neck a little bit. Um, the neck should be much longer. You already have a square head that's short, a short square head stylistically. Uh, with this beautiful sharp ear and a long neck really does a lot um, but the short neck with the short head kind of just feels like we're missing something but that's just a design choice this one perspective problem she's looking this direction but her belly is looking in another direction it just doesn't feel like much is happening 
I was going to cast a long shadow on top of this, uh, on half of her, and then kind of just leave her in a shadow halfway through. That might be interesting on an angle, just like that, like she's emerging from a cast shadow. The face is very boring, there's zero expression, nothing is really happening outside of her being a, a cute girl with boobs. You need to give us something else that's going on. Um, we've been there, done that, we've seen all of this before. Give us something new. Maybe completely crop her hair, make her hair completely short. Instead of looking so basic, I'm sorry, um, you can give her a cropped haircut, you can give her something a little different. Um, you can give her a, a green lipstick, just do something else, um, and your value sharing a lot around the nose. This is a sign that you should be finishing your 14 day challenge before trying something like this, which feels very, very clunky. And this one, um, you're not reflecting enough light on the ground here. If you have this many clouds, the sky is this bright, it feels like you're darkening the skies, almost a nighttime blue, but the clouds are pure white like the sun is still very very high if it was if it was sunset we'd have a bit more orange and you have a lot of metallic surfaces here that are just not shiny enough and not bright enough um, and the object that's moving should be much much darker than its environment um, so those are some good areas to start from so uh, thank you everyone for watching class is done so to remind you guys this Thursday is the challenge submission for the um, uh, boss fight, please join us if you're submitting something. If you submit it and you can join, you don't have a, you know you don't have you don't have work or school and you're in the good time zone, please join. I like when there's a, a live attendance for our challenge days. I put a lot into these. I'd like if you guys attended, and then we have if you want to join and want to submit art for critique hour, you can do so by going to isarak.com and going on the Google Plus icon here right over here and um, submitting. Make sure you read the rules. Please respect the rules. We're reaching 8,000 members already we've hit. Um, so please, please make sure you're following the rules and submitting properly. No anime is welcome. Uh, no fan art is welcome unless you've done something uh, unique to it, unless you've added a twist or done a realistic version of it. But no popular anime, um, no popular media kind of fan art is allowed. Um, like if you drew a different take on Mario where he's completely realistic, that's okay. But if you redrew Mario, that's not acceptable. Um, and then a bunch of other rules about nudity and gore and all of that. And um, uh, people being having a bad attitude maybe when they're getting a critique. If you're not getting critiques for your 14 day challenge, please be active. You won't get critiques if you don't give it. This is the community. So communicate. And uh, the Portrait Studio sale will be this Friday. If you don't have a copy, um, I hope you guys get your copy. And um, I hope the sale is exactly what you're looking for. If it's not low enough, um, uh, you might want to wait for October. or I'm not even sure if I'm going to do one in October. They're very, very fatiguing to announce and all of that. Um, I'll, try, I'll, try to, I'll, try, I'll try, but it'll be an almost 50% off sale twice a year. Um, the next one would be October if, if you feel like you need it at 50% off, but it's not that much of a jump off. It, Porsche Studio in itself is less than 100. Um, so I can't wait for you guys to see the preview. I'll try to show you a preview this Thursday with the hand model. I'll try to show you a preview for the UI changes. Um, it's looking beautiful. It's, I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of what I've been doing. Um, and uh, thank you everyone for coming today. I'm so sorry I don't have time for questions. Um, if you guys want to submit some more stuff, like hair uh, studies, feel free to. Thank you for everyone who did hair studies. I'm sorry if I didn't get to you. There was just a, too much to cover. Um, and I will see you guys on Thursday for the Boss Fight Challenge. Good luck, everyone, on finalizing your stuff. And please make sure you hand all your work in. Um, yes, they do need to be submitted early on Thursday. You cannot submit them at 5 o'clock. I will not look at them. Uh, if you guys remember, again, the tabs that I had to go through... Um, I, I, I even started the stream early at like 4.30 and went through all the tabs to make sure everyone's work was added to the queue and I, I still didn't get to everyone and a lot of people posted way very very late and wondered why their work didn't get looked at. Um, so please make sure this one might be turned into a contest um, and I'm not sure if enough people join I will turn it into a contest. Last time we had like a hundred submissions for the character design. Um, for the ancient weapon character design. So I'll see you guys on Thursday. Good luck everyone with all your submissions. Bye